All right, so we just went over the, uh, we just set up the problem. Uh, presumably you would have solved it in Blackboard now. So let's, uh, let's try to solve it. Okay, so we have the same supply and demand function. I wish there was an easy way to, oh, hey, there is an easy way to copy this, huh? Oh, look at that. All right, so we have the same supply and demand function, but now I have an, uh, a binding price ceiling of 200. I guess I gave away the hand that it's binding, but I would totally not say so. So let's put the price ceiling up there. Okay, so you have a binding price ceiling of 200. Okay. And now we need to solve for the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. From there, we're going to solve for the total surplus, the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, and uh, the deadweight loss, and if there's a shortage or surplus, the different kind of surplus. So four total surpluses in this, in this question here. All right, so uh, we have the... Uh, we have the ceiling here, it's at 200. Two hundred. Okay. And what is the equilibrium price? Well, it's a binding price ceiling. So this is an easy one. All right, so if y'all don't got this, what is the uh, equilibrium price. Let me scroll in and also make this bigger. Well, the equilibrium price, so it's a binding price ceiling. Equilibrium price is the price ceiling, which we called P upper bar in the example, but in this case, it'll just be 200. Since I already have it labeled as 200, we could call it P upper bar, it doesn't matter. But it's 200 is a numerical value. Okay, what is the equilibrium quantity? Okay, so there are three quantities that I, that I can see of importance on this graph. You have this guy over here, this guy over here, and this one that we already labeled over here. Okay, which one is your quantity supplied? Well, that's going to be this guy on the left here. Quantity supplied. What's your quantity demanded? It's going to be the guy on the right. And why do I know that? Well, it's easy. <laughs> this is the, the intersection between the supply curve and the price ceiling. Okay, and this is the intersection between the demand curve and the demand and the price ceiling. So that's why it's the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded. Okay. So what is this graph telling me? It's telling me that at a price of 200, QS is the number of people who want to supply. QD is the number of people who want to demand. Okay. And what does that mean? It means that what's going to be the equilibrium price? The equilibrium price is going to be the one that's lower. Why is it the one that's lower? Because if you can't match a buyer to a seller, then whatever there's less of is the number of transactions that's going to go through. If there are 50 buyers and 25 sellers, well, guess what? Only 25 transactions are going through. Okay. So it's the quantity to supply. All right, but that's not good enough. I don't. If you just write quantity supplied, well, you're halfway there, but you're not. You're only halfway there. <laughs> what is the quantity supplied? What's the numerical value of the quantity supplied? Well, we know the price ceiling. P equals 200. That's one equation. We know the supply curve. P equals 100 plus QS. Right. That was our supply equation from the initial setup, P equals 100 plus QS. So we have two equations, right? Two equations, two unknowns. 
really we have two equations, one unknown. We, we know P, right? And at equilibrium, uh, equilibrium price, which I will call, I'll call P bar, equals P bar, and QS equals Q bar, okay? Note here, QS is not equal to QD, because um, your quantity demand that is artificially being changed, right? You're only at this point are the supply and demand curves intersecting at the price. So now you have an, a new equilibrium of QS, not QS equals QD. But I'm going to say QS equals Q bar and P bar equal to P bar. And that's just an easy way of saying, a complex way of saying we can equalize these two equations. Uh, 200 equals P equals 100 plus Q bar now, right? So the intersection of these two lines, P equals 200 and 100 plus QS equals P. What's the intersection between them? It's going to be given by this equation. So I'm going to subtract 100 from both sides. You get 100 equals Q bar. Ah, come on. Q bar. So the, the intersection between the price ceiling and the supply curve is Q bar equals 100, P bar equals 200. Okay? There's no, there's no way to check this, um, but it is also pretty straightforward. Basically, you're just subtracting the, you're solving for Q once you plug in the value for the price ceiling. Okay, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, so again, we had two equations. The first equation was the equation for the price ceiling, P equals 200. The second equation was the supply equation, P equals 100 plus QS. Okay, so we use those to find the intersection of those two graphs, and we get uh, 100 comma 200. So 100 and 200 over here. All right. What is QD? So how many people are demanding when uh, when there's a price ceiling? Well, demand is going to increase, essentially. Quantity of demand is going to increase, I should say. So the quantity of demand that increases because the, the people who have a willingness to pay between this between the, all the equilibrium price and the price ceiling are going to enter the market. So you're going to have a higher QD. And what, what's the actual um, value of this QD? Well, the same way that we solve for QS, we can solve for QD. We have the price ceiling equation equals P equals 200. And we have the demand equation, which is 1,000 minus 2QD. Okay. So we can equalize those to find the intersection. So I'm basically um, setting P equal to P. So on one hand, I have 200 is equal to 1,000 minus 2QD. On the other hand, 2QD. Okay, I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides, add 2QD to both sides. I get 2QD equals 800. Divide both sides by QD. You get QD equals 400. Okay, so if I asked you what is the equilibrium, the equilibrium is 100, 200. This is the equilibrium point with the, pre with the binding price ceiling. With binding price ceiling. Okay, what's the significance of 400? Well, on its own, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Whoa, what just happened there? Ah, I don't like this. <laughs> this is a millennial stumbles through technology. You, you guys are probably like, uh, what's this millennial doing here? All right. All right, so uh, what, what's the significance of QD? Well, it's the number of people who want to buy it, but why, why does that matter? 
It does it on its own, but you might want to know what the shortage is, right? Because people want to buy it who can't buy it, so there's going to be um, a shortage. So the shortage before I said was the number of people who want to buy it minus the number of people who want to sell it, or QD minus QS. That's going to be 400 minus 100, or 300, okay? All right, so we have the equilibrium price, we have the equilibrium quantity, we have the shortage. All right, now we need the total surplus, the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, and the dead weight loss. Okay. So, dead weight loss, or sorry, the, the total surplus is going to be this red trapezoid. Okay. That's your total surplus. Your producer surplus, maybe I need this a little bit bigger. Your producer surplus is going to be this in blue. Right, it's going to be the difference between the supply curve and the equilibrium price, which is now the price ceiling. Okay, so it's the same interpretation. Um, it's just a, you know, a different look, a little bit different. It looks a little different. Okay. So the, it's the area between the supply curve and the equilibrium price. Okay. Yeah. And then what is the consumer surplus? It's going to be this area now. The whole green trapezoid is your consumer surplus. And remember, why is it a trapezoid? It's a trapezoid because you can only get consumer surplus on the things that you buy. So presuming that the good goes to the highest willingness to pay people, um, then the, uh, the people who are getting consumer surplus are only going to be those people. Okay. So the equilibrium quantity here is, is cat that QS. The old equilibrium quantity over here, Q star, the, like, the difference is goods that used to be bought that aren't being bought anymore. Okay. And I distinguish that from the, the shortage, which are goods that people want to buy now that they're not buying now. Okay. So this is everybody who wants to buy with the equilibrium price at the ceiling. This is everybody who wants to sell. This was the people who wanted to buy before the ceiling came into effect, okay, versus the people who want to buy, who want to sell it now, okay. So these people in this little area here are neither buying nor selling, okay. So I'm going to give that its own little thing. Um, I need another color. I'm out of colors, guys. Um, I guess I can do rainbow. Does that work? I don't know if that works. We'll give we'll give rainbow a shot. Do I want this gravelly looking rainbow? Let's give this bad boy a shot. Ooh, that's neato. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So this little area in here that I'm gonna draw. That's your dead weight loss. Okay, so if you add up today's consumer surplus plus today's producer surplus plus today's dead weight loss, you are getting the total surplus from before there was rent control. You're getting the 135,000. Okay, um, but uh, obviously there is rent control, so the the quantity that's going to be bought is going to like the equilibrium quantity is going to contract in a little bit. So people aren't going to get um, the apartments that used to be get that used to have apartments, okay? Because there's not enough people who are willing to supply apartments. So what that does is that leaves a um, like an emptiness here, where people aren't buying or selling, and so therefore they're not getting a surplus on the, bu the buying and selling, which is what we call the deadweight loss. Okay. So we have the shapes now of the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, and the deadweight loss. 
And you know, if you wanted the total surplus, you're just going to add consumer produce surplus as well. So we have all these shapes, um, but now we need to calculate the harder step, which is actually figuring out what the values are. Okay. So let me do this. Let me make it a little smaller. Let's start a new text box. We're going to do a little bit of math. Okay, I'm just going to write math for a second just as a placeholder. <laughs> okay. Um, so we can go ahead and calculate consumer surplus, or sorry, producer surplus immediately. Why do we, why, why do we, why can we do that? So producer surplus is the triangle between uh, 0, 200, 0, 100, and 100, 200. Okay. So it's this triangle here where the y-intercept of 0, 100, the equilibrium price of 0, 200, and the uh, equilibrium point of 100, 200 uh, is the triangle. Okay, so it's this triangle here. Right, and if you don't understand where those points are coming from, again, it's 0, 100. 100 is the y intercept, y intercept of the y, on the y-axis. 0, 200 from here, and 100, 200 from here. Okay. So we have everything we need to do to calculate producer surplus. Let's make it a little bit smaller. All right. So produce surplus is one half base times height. One half. What's your base? You're going from zero to 100. What's your height? You're going from 200 to 100, or 100 from 200, whatever you call it. So your producer surplus is going to be one half, 100 times 100. So 5K. Like a race. All right. You guys like my dad jokes? They're bad. <laughs> All right. Um, so next up, we got this consumer surplus. Okay. So we know this point is going to be 0, 1,000. We know this point is 0, 200. We know this point is 100, 200. What about this point over here? We don't know that one yet. Okay. So consumer surplus is the trapezoid. It's a trapezoid now, remember. Between 0, 200, 100, 200, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, and 0, one, oh, my cat. Leave me alone, dude. It's too late to, to edit this video, so I've, I've gone too long. I'm not, I'm not editing it there. So whatever, I lose a little face. Leave me alone, buddy. All right, so uh, <laughs> I'm just a little startled. <laughs> um, there he is. Say hi. Okay, so you got the uh, you got the four points here. You have two hundred comma one hundred. You have, or excuse me, uh, zero comma two hundred, which would be the equilibrium price. You have zero comma one thousand, which is the uh, y-intercept for the demand equation. You have this point over here, which is one hundred comma two hundred, the equilibrium. And then you got this random point that we haven't really defined. So what does this random point mean? This is the willingness to pay for the last person who buys the good. Okay. Um, that, that's its intuitive explanation. Graphically, though, what is it? It's the intersection between 
the equation Q star equals 100 and the demand equation. Okay. So Q, 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 or question mark, question mark, question mark equals the intersection between Q bar equals 100, which is the line given here, and demand equation, a.k.a. it is the willingness to pay for the 100th good, the 100th apartment. Okay? So, how do we find it? Well, it's easy. Easy. Plug Q bar equals 100 into the demand equation. Easy. It's very easy. Okay. So demand equation was P equals uh, 1,000 minus 2 QD. We're going to do 1,000 now minus 2 times 100. 2 times 100 is 200. So P bar, or excuse me, P, the willingness to pay for the 100th good, this last point here, is going to be 800. So this point here, question mark, question mark, question mark, comma, question mark, question mark, question mark, is equal to 100 on the x-axis, because it's the 100th apartment being sold, and 800, which is the last person's willingness to pay. Okay. Okay, so now we have the full trapezoid, right? We have 1,000, sorry, 0, 1,000, we have 0, 200, we have 100, 200, and we have um, 100, 800, okay? And the area of a trapezoid is going to be 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times height. And for this purpose, since I have uh, one line going up here like this and one line going up here like this, but only one vertical line. I'm going to make it base times height 1 plus height 2. Okay. It doesn't really matter because, it, you know, if you flip it around, it'll, then it'll just be the same thing. Like if you flip the trapezoid over, then your bases become your heights. Okay. So what's the base? The base is 100, right? It's this area here going from 0 to 100. Okay. What's your first height? Well, depending on which one you're considering, is it this long line or the small line? Um, let's start with the long line. Okay. I would say that height 1 goes from 1,000 to 200, so it should be 1,000 minus 200. What about height 2? Well, that goes from 800, which is the point that we found, to 200, so that'll be 800 minus 200. And uh, these guys should be added. Sorry about that. I'm adding parentheses that actually don't matter, but are better for uh, explanation's sake. So this is going to be your height 1. This is going to be your height 2. Okay. So to simplify that, we have 1 half 100 plus, or times... 800 plus 600, okay? 800 plus 600 times 100 times 25, we're going to get 70K. And that is your consumer surplus. Okay, so consumer surplus equals 70K. Producer surplus equals 5K. Total surplus then 
must equal 70 plus 5k. 70k plus 5k equals 75k. All right. So just let's take a step back before I solve for deadweight loss, and let's make sure that you're still with me. All right, so we have this graph here. Okay. We found the equilibrium price by noting that we have a binding price ceiling. The reason that we know it's binding is because of the price ceiling, which is the maximum price. We know that the maximum price is below the old equilibrium price, so the maximum price is going to be the one that's in effect. Okay, so you have to move the equilibrium price down to the price ceiling. Okay, then we have to find what the equilibrium quantity was. We found the equilibrium quantity by looking at where the supply curve intersects with the price ceiling. Okay, and we know that it's the supply curve that matters because that's the one that intersects left, the, the leftmost point. AKA, we know that there will be less suppliers than there will be demanders, okay? So we found that by saying um, P equals 200. That's the equation for the price ceiling. So we're looking for the intersection between the supply curve and the price ceiling. Price ceiling equation is P equals 200. Supply curve equation was 100 plus QS equals P. So we set P equals 200 equals 100 plus QS. Okay, subtract 100 from both sides, we get QS equals 100. That's how we got this point here. So the equilibrium price is 200, the equilibrium quantity is 100. So the equilibrium point is 100 comma 200. Okay, if you wanted to solve demand, which I ask you to in order to solve for the shortage, um, then you could find the intersection between the demand curve and the, the quantity and, and the price ceiling. So just like we plugged in P equals 200 for the supply curve to find the intersection between price uh, ceiling and supply, we could do the same thing for the demand curve. So we solved P equals 200 equals 1000 minus 2QD. Okay, we simplified that. We got um, that QD equals 400. Okay, so the amount of shortage then will be uh, 400 minus 100 equals 300. If you're unsure if it's QD or QS, that matters in this case, but you are sure that it's a binding price ceiling, um, well, you could always me memorize the fact that binding price ceilings always leads to shortages, binding price floors always leads to surpluses. Alternatively, you could have just seen that QS is lower than QD once you solve for them both. Okay. Um, okay, so we just found the we found the price, the equilibrium price with the binding price ceiling. We found the equilibrium quantity with the binding price ceiling. We found the shortage. Um, then we had to solve for the producer, consumer, and total surplus. And we found producer surplus because we have all three points. We have the y-intercept, we have the uh, equilibrium price, and we have the equilibrium quantity over here. So we knew all three points, so we just had to find the area of this triangle. Height is 100, base is 100, so 1 half 100 times 100 is 5K. Then for consumer surplus, we have a trapezoid. Okay, and we know three of the points off the bat. We know the y-intercept. We know the equilibrium price, and we know the equilibrium quantity and price. Okay, so we have these three points here, and we needed this point over here, which is the intersection of Q equals 100 and the demand curve. Okay, it's the demand curve at the point of 100. So we plug 100 into the demand curve to find this point. Okay, and what's the significance of 100? It's the equilibrium quantity. We plug the equilibrium quantity into the demand curve to see what the last person's willingness to pay was. Okay, and that'll give us this vertical height here. Okay, so you have 800, and this is 200, so this height is going to be 600. And then you have 1,000, and this is 200, so this height's going to be 800. And then you have the base of 100. So the area is 1 half height 1 plus height 2 times the base. The area is 1 half 800 times, or sorry, 800 
plus uh, 600 times 100. Uh, so that should be, I think it was 70K. All right. So there's two ways to find dead weight loss. Okay. We now know all three points for this triangle here. We know that this is 100 comma 200. We know that this is 100 comma 800 over here, right? Because we solved that when we we're looking for consumer surplus. And we know that this is 300 comma 400 because this is the old equilibrium. So we could do straightforwardly, we could do dead weight loss. Dead weight loss is equal to the area between the triangle. I should say area of the triangle between we had this point here of 100 comma 200 this point up here of 100 100 comma 800 and this point over here of 300 comma 400 okay so that's going to be area oof, DWL equals one half base times height What's the base? You're going from here to here. Okay, so you're going from 100 to 300 equals 200. Oops, sorry. I should I, I write it out. 300 minus 100. Okay, right, because base is always going to be a parallel or a uh, it's always going to be uh, perpendicular to the height, right? So it's going to be this this area right here. Okay, 100 to 300. That's just like geometry. If you're unclear on that, I'd say just go back to the area of a triangle, just like see it visually. But it's going to be this this from the uh, it's going to be the perpendicular distance between the uh, the point up here and the base. Okay. What's the height? It's going to be this area right here, which goes from 800 to 200, so the height is going to be 600. So 1 half 200 times 600, that should equal 60K. Okay. Now you get to this point, and what do you what do you do? You say, "Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I got an answer, but I don't know if it's right or not." Well, what you can do is, hey, we have this we have this graph up here, right? And we found the total surplus of 135k, right? And that's equal to this area right here, right? Well, that graph is is this graph too. Just divide it up, right? So this area is still 135K. It's just split three ways. It's split between your consumer surplus, it's split between your producer surplus, and it's split between your dead weight loss. Okay? So old total surplus of 135K should equal your consumer surplus a new consumer surplus plus your new producer surplus plus your dead weight loss, which I guess is new because before it was just implied zero. Okay? Alternatively, you can write that as your new total surplus plus your new dead weight loss. I don't care how you write it. The concept is the same. But we have our new total surplus of 75K. We have our dead weight loss of 60K. You add those two up, you have 135K. Oh, look, that's my old total surplus. Gee whiz, 
I must have done something right. Okay, so we've just checked our work. We have a consistent answer here. We have, to summarize everything, to summarize, equilibrium price is the binding price ceiling. We know it's binding because if the price ceiling is below the equilibrium price, it's binding. Okay, of uh, 200 equilibrium quantity is the uh, quantity supplied when price equals 200. We know it's quantity supplied because that's the area on the left. That's going to be the restrictive factor. That's the where the ceiling intersects first, okay? If we're binding price floor, notice, just presuming this, that this word says floor, if we're binding price floor, it would intersect the demand curve first, so quantity demanded would be the one that matters. So we'll call that Q bar is equal to, uh, what was it, 300? No, nope, it was 100. Okay. We have the shortage equals quantity demanded minus quantity supplied. Why do we know it's a shortage? We know it's a shortage because more people want to buy it than want to sell it. If you had the shortage as negative, that means that quantity demanded is less than quantity supplied. And what does that mean? It means you actually have a surplus. But anyway, we know it's a shortage. Uh, but we didn't find quantity demanded. Quantity demanded uh, when price equals 200 is... Uh, what do we say it was 400? So let me take this one. I just want to move it down. I did this a little out of order. I'm sorry about that. Equals 400 minus 100. 300 is your quantity or is your shortage. Okay. Then we had. Uh, uh, producer surplus is area between P equals 200 and supply curve. Okay. Given by 0, 200, 0, 100. And 100, 200, those would be the three points. And that area, so PS was 5K. We had consumer surplus is area between, I'm going to write trap area for trapezoid area, between um, demand curve and price for everyone that can buy CS equals area of um, before I do that we found the point that we didn't know that top point up there we found that by setting Q equals to 100. I'm going to call Q bar. In the demand equation, then we solved the area to get consumer surplus is equal to 
Ugh, I hate that. Consumer surplus is equal to uh, 70K. Finally, consumer surplus plus producer surplus equals total surplus, new total surplus minus old total surplus is your dead weight loss. Sorry, I just want a little more space here. And we can check everything. We can check, check everything by finding the area of the DWL triangle. So if the area of the DWL triangle, the dead weight loss triangle, is the same one that you got by subtracting your new total surplus minus your old total surplus. Sorry, that should be vice versa. Your old total surplus is going to be higher. If you get the same answer um, by finding the area versus finding the old minus new, then you know that you've done everything right. Okay. So to wrap that all up, let's jump through these slides. Okay. So you have the equilibrium price and quantity of 100, 200. Quantity of demand is 400. Quantity of supply is 100. The shortage is 300. This is what it looks like when you have an actual nice looking graph. Okay. Again, notice that the price ceiling interse intersects supply before it intersects demand. That's how you know it's a shortage and not a surplus. Okay, and then here's the, the calculations for the uh, total surplus, the consumer surplus, the producer surplus, and the debt loss. All right, so I'm going to stop there and go on to the last couple slides, and that'll be it for this week. Cool. Thank you all.